we have already made a single episode about complete knowledge of vertical curves. However, for the viewer's convenience, we have split it into three parts. The links to that complete episode is given in the description. If anyone wishes to watch that, they can choose from the description. This episode is part one of three. In this episode, we will see the basic elements of the vertical curve. Such as, the purpose of the vertical curve. The elements of vertical curve. The types of vertical curve. The importance of sight stopping distance. We will understand everything in just seven minutes time. So, please watch till the end. Welcome to Civil Guru. These videos made in different languages, like English, Hindi, Tamil, and also in Arabic now. Please choose your desired language from our playlist. If you like this video, please like and subscribe now. On highways, when an abrupt change in the grades of vertical alignment will make a big impact on the vehicle passing over. That will lead to either injuries or dangerous to the vehicles. To avoid this danger, and to smooth out the change in a vertical motion, the vertical curves are introduced to join two intersecting grades. These vertical curves provides a smooth transition between two sloped roadways and allow the vehicles to negotiate the change in the grades gradually rather than a sharp cut. Thus, contributes the safety, comfort, and appearance. Before going deep into design, let us understand the elements of the vertical curve. Let us see the components of grades. The grades, or gradient of the road is, denoted as, G. And, it is expressed in two ways. The first one is, as percentage. Example, 2% or 3% like that. And, the second one is, 1 in N which is one vertical in N horizontals, such as one in 100 or one in 400 like that. The next component is the rate of change of grade, which is denoted as R. This rate of change of grade helps to determine the length of the vertical curve. The rate of change of grade is a constant value, which helps to produce a uniform vertical curve. For highways, it is calculated by considering the criteria of the stopping site distance. However, the Department of Transport in every country have their own constant value based on the nature of transport in their country. Now, let us see the types of vertical curves. In principle, there are only two types of vertical curves exist. The first one is the sag curves. These sag curves are used where the change in grade is positive, such as valleys. And the second one is crest curves, also known as summit curves. These summit curves are used when the change in grade is negative, such as hills. However, while designing these vertical curves, it could be elaborated into six types. That is, First is, a positive grade G1 is, followed by a negative grade G2. Second is, a negative grade G1 is, followed by a positive grade G2. Third is, a positive grade G1 is followed by, another positive grade G2. Here, we have to notice that, the G2 is, greater than G1. The fourth is, a positive grade G1 is followed by, another positive grade G2. But here, the G1 is, greater than G2. And, the fifth is, a negative grade G1 is followed by, another negative grade G2. Here, the G2 is, greater than G1. And, finally, the sixth is, a negative grade G1 is followed by, another negative grade G2. But here, the G1 is greater than G2. Now, let us see, what is sight distance? And, why it is considered as important in designing? While a vehicle is traveling on the road at a design speed, and, there is some hazards found on the road, then, the driver needs some time, to observe the object, and to react on it. 
and once the brake is applied, it will take some time to stop the vehicle, based on the deceleration of that vehicle's speed. Within these time, the vehicle will travel some distance based on the speed. The safe traveling distance, between the vehicle and the hazard object, is known as the stopping site distance. In technical definitions, it is defined as the site distance S is, the length of roadway ahead visible to the driver is, the stopping site distance. This is calculated with due consideration of, 1, the time for driver to perceive the hazard. 2, the time required to react. 3, the time to stop the vehicle after brakes are applied. The minimum length required for stopping site distances, recommended by American Association of State Highway and Transportation Officials are, given in this table. Let us take a sample on this table. When a vehicle is traveling in 100 km per hour speed, and, an object is found on the road. Then, the vehicle needs minimum of 185 meters to stop the vehicle, without any hazard. While designing, the height of the driver's eye is, estimated to be 1080 mm. That is, 3.5 feet. And, the height of the object to be seen by the driver on the surface is, 300 millimeters, that is, 1 foot. That means, while designing, we must care that, the difference in profile levels, shall not be more than this limit, within this sight distance. In case, this difference is more than this limit. And, objects are not visible within this sight distance. Then, we have to increase the length of vertical curve by reducing the value of the rate of change of grade, R. Hope you people understand the importance of stopping sight distance. If you like these videos, please subscribe now and share with your friends. And also don't forget to press the bell button. Thank you.